Today is another bright new day that the Lord has made and we are going to rejoice in it and be glad in it as we study His Word. And like always, we're going to be explaining another often confusing question. So I hope you've got a pen, a paper, and your Bible. And let's get started. Why believe in Jesus? Why should someone believe in Jesus? There are countless reasons to believe in Jesus. Many of us start on our journey of faith because we need something that Jesus can give us. We need help, hope, healing, or joy. Our lives are falling apart and we want answers, solutions. But there's one critical reason to believe in Jesus that underlies all others. And that is to bring us into right relationship with God. Reconciliation with God is the remedy for all that is wrong with us and the resolution for everything we need. Why did Jesus come to earth? Why did he die on the cross? He came and did all that. He did to bring us into a relationship with God the Father. The Bible tells us, For God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, no longer counting people's sin against them. 2 Corinthians 5.19 And mending our broken relationship with God is the primary point of Christian salvation. And the Bible says that all of us have a problem. And this problem is called sin. Romans 3.23 For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. 1 John 1.8 If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. And because we are born into this world as sinners, as the Bible says in Psalms 51.5 Behold, I was sharpened in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. We are separated from God and on a path that leads to eternal destruction. But God loves us and wants us to be in a relationship with him. He wants to save us from destruction and gives us everlasting life. The Bible says, and I quote, God shows how much he loved us by sending his one and only son into the world so that we might have eternal life through him. 1 John 4, 9. And Jesus' death on the cross paid the full price for our sin. The Bible says he himself is a sacrifice that atones for our sins and not only our sins but the sins of all the world. 1 John 2, 2. Jesus satisfied the debt that we owed and took the punishment we deserved. Isaiah 53 verse 5 But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed. 1 Peter 1, 18 to 19 For as much as you know that you are not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by traditions from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot. 1 Peter 2, 24 Who is own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sin should live into righteousness by whose stripes you are healed. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21 For he has made him to be seen for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Galatians 3.13 Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law being made a curse for us for it is written Cast is everyone that hangs on a tree. Romans 6.23 For the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ our Lord. You see all those verses? Jesus satisfied all that. And uh, something we have to ponder also is when Christ arose from the dead, he conquered death for us. So we don't have to die because Christ died for us. Think about Revelation 1.18. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of hell and of death. Hebrews 2.14 For as much then as the children are partakers of the flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, 
that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Friends, the only way to be forgiven of sin and restored to God is to repent and believe in Jesus. The Bible tells us in the book of Acts 2.38 then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The book of Acts 17.30 And the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. Mark 1.4 John did baptize in the wilderness and preached the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. Luke 13 verse 3 I tell you nay, but except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Jesus is the only way to the Father. The Bible tells us in 1 Timothy 2.5 For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. And in John Chapter six, verse uh, uh, chapter fourteen, verse six to seven. The Bible says, Jesus said unto him, "I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. If you had known me, you should have known my Father also. And from henceforth you know him, and have seen him." God the Father longs to connect with us in an intimate relationship. When we believe in Jesus, his son, we become children of God. The Bible says, but to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God. John 1 verse 12. And when we believe in Jesus, we receive the access to God's holy presence to comfort, protect, lead and guide us. Ephesians 2 13. Let us therefore come boldly. Uh, sorry, Ephesians 2, 13, he says, But now in Christ Jesus, you who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Verse 18, Ephesians 2, 18, For through him we, we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Ephesians 3, 11 to 12, According to the eternal purpose, which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with him, with confidence by the faith of him. Hebrews 4.16 Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Jesus teaches us and speaks to us through his word. Psalms 109, uh, 119 verse 105 Thy word, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And Jesus always enables us to live for him by the power of his Holy Spirit. Acts 1.8 But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and unto all the uttermost part of the earth. 1 Corinthians 2.10 uh, We can read to 13. He tells us this, But God has revered, revealed them unto us by His Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the Spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man, but the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are, are freely given to us of God. Which things we also speak, not in the world which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual with spiritual. You see the point here? Really, really important. And uh, when we continue by understanding this, like for example, if uh, 
we believe in Jesus, we are going to receive the greatest gift of all, which is the salvation of our soul. This is the most important thing. The Bible told us in 1 Peter 1.8 Whom having not seen, you love. In whom, through now you see him not, yet believing, you rejoice with joy, unspeakable and full of joy, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. And this gift is free. We can't do anything to earn it. We don't deserve it. But he gives it to us anyway. God saved you by his grace when you believed. And you can take credit for this. It is a gift of God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done. So none can boast about it. Ephesians 2, 8, 9 gives the account. And uh, believing in Jesus opens up our hearts to experience a love like no other. The kind of love that is willing to sacrifice and die for us. John 10 verse 11 I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd leaves his life for the sheep. Romans 5 8 But God commanded his love towards us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. God's love is the strongest and most profound love ever known and nothing will ever separate us from it. He told us in Romans 8.35 who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As written, for thy sake we are killed all day long and we are counted as sheep for the slaughter. It goes on and on and on and tells us nothing will separate us from the love of God. And of course we understand that believing in Jesus and having a relationship with God sets us free from our old life of guilt, shame and sin. John 8.36 If the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. Romans 8.2 For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Only through Christ can we experience the satisfaction of our souls and that our souls always long for the Bible says, for he satisfies the longing soul and the hungry soul he fills with good things. Psalms 107, 9. In conclusion, when we enter into a right relationship with God through faith in Jesus Christ, we learn who we were created to be and discover the true purpose of our lives. He says in Ephesians 2, 10, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them and also Philippians 3 8 to 10 it tells us yeah doubtless and I count all things but loss for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but dung that I may win Christ and be found in him not having mine own righteousness which is the law but that which is through the faith of Christ the righteousness which is in of God by faith that I may know him and that the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death And that's the end of our today's Bible study lesson. Hope it was a blessing to you. Hope you've learned something. Please remember you can always download this podcast to listen later offline or to share to your friends and family. And please don't forget to favorite our podcasts and subscribe to our channel that is Keith Muoki so that you can always be notified whenever we post another Bible question. And if you like to get saved or you need a step-by-step -step order of salvation, how to be saved, so that you can well preach to a friend or family, or maybe you feel led to support our ministry, please visit our website, keithmuoki.com. Otherwise, I hope to see you soon in the next one.